Good morning and welcome into this space. I'm glad that you I have something going on with my phone here. I don't know what it is. Sudden alarms. It's sort of crazy. Anyway, I'm going to turn it off and then that will settle that issue. Just give me a second here. All right. It's turned off and we can move on. Well, good morning and welcome into the space on this Thanksgiving morning. Um, I think there are many things that we can give thanks for despite this year that we've had. It's, you know, it's not been one of our better years and uh, it's certainly been a trial with the pandemic and uh, we're gone through things that most of us have never gone through. So let's give thanks to God uh, and give thanks God for all that he's done to bring us through this pandemic, to bring us to the point where we are this morning, and that we can also give thanks to everything that God is, is doing in our lives. And I, I give thanks for you being here and glad that you're here with us. Let's take a deep breath to get ourselves started and get ourselves centered and slowed down a little bit. And let out slowly. Okay, and grasp on to that presence, that presence of Jesus with us. And that's something that we certainly can give thanks with because Jesus is present to us through this age, is present whenever two or more gather in his name, and is, is present in our lives. We we get distracted, we get busy, and, and we put aside God in a variety of ways, but this is really a time for us to be focused strongly on that presence with us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us. Let us now enter into prayer. Hold on a second. Here we go. There we go. Together, almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divide and enslaved by sin, may be freed, brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we get into this, I want to do make a quick reminder that if if you have any desire to learn more about us and and the church that I am the pastor over, you can go to our website www.reliance slash our reliance dash dot org. I hope that you will join us and, and find out more about us. And let's get to our reading this morning. Our first reading is Psalm 147. That's wrong up there. We'll quickly correct that. How's that for, for quick correction right on the fly? It's amazing what you can do live these days. So anyway, our first Psalm this morning is 147. <clears throat> Let us listen to these words. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and his song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. And great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord of thanksgiving. Make melody to our God in the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, and makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is in the strength of the horse, not nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. 
Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His world, his word rule runs swiftly. He gives snow, snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. What a great uh, psalm of praise and thanksgiving for this, this Thanksgiving Day uh, 2020. It's despite all we know, you know, we know that we can praise the Lord. And it's not just for the big things, you know, you know this is one of the things I notice in this psalm. It talks about God determines the number of the stars and he gives them names and he's abundant in power and understand is beyond measure. We've got this huge God, but this this God also is able to gather the outcasts of Israel, able to heal the brokenhearted and bind broken wounds and lifts up the downtrodden and cast the wicked to the ground. This is the kind of God that we have. We have a personal God, a God that is attentive to humanity and has our best in his heart all the time. His love is steadfast, and I give thanks for that. We're going to add, have an additional reading this morning. We're going to also read from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. Oops, this did not go where it was supposed to go. Let's see if we can get there this time. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to them today i declare to the lord your god that i have come into the land that the lord swore to our ancestors to give us and when the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the lord your god you shall make this response before the lord your god a wandering armenian is my ancestor he went down into egypt and lived there as an alien Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our afflictions, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and of signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground to you. O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. And then you together, the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. What a beautiful word that we're hearing here in this this recitation of God has done this for us. God took our people that were under bondage, under the bondage and, and under the rule of the, of the Pharaoh, and we were treated badly and oppressed, and he brought us out and brought us into a new land that he gave to us. And in that new land, he established these, these new rules and new ways of living out our lives that that honor God and honor each other, that honors, that sets up for us that we not only about ourselves, but we must take care of the other. So 
if we take care of each other as we've done through this pandemic, then you know we reap harvests, and the harvest that we reap, you know, is God's. It's, it's not ours. This is one of the things that it defines here clearly: is God has given us these fruits of the of our labors, and now we're to bring back to Him a portion. And you know, this is what He's calling now. To, if you know, if we keep ninety percent of what God gives us, can you imagine? You know, we still are quite wealthy, quite bountiful, and then share that ninety percent too again with what with others, you know, and celebrate what God has done with others. That's part of the idea of these throwing the parties is to celebrate, to celebrate with others who who are neighbors, who are friends, who are family. And say, look, you know, God is so grateful. So I hope this day, despite wherever you might be, in whatever the pandemic, you'll be celebrating. Our gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to John. It's chapter 6, verses 26 through 35. Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you are your ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the God, God the Father has set his seal. And then he said to them, and then he said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who has sent you. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said to him, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We all have our needs, our physical needs that need to be taken care of, and God has already seen to that. And um, we can we can all share in that because that's what we're supposed to do is share in those for for those needs and that you know that we have sufficient food grown and we have sufficient uh, water that is pure and and clean for us to drink that can be provided for everyone but we also have another need a need to have our spirits taken care of our soul taken care of we need to have a sense of belonging and in jesus is that's we can belong you know wherever jesus might be if we're there with Jesus, then we belong. We are together. And, and that urge to, to belong to something, to be part of something, is fed and taken care of because he is the bread of life. He gives us life. And I give thanks to God for all of that. Let us now turn over to our prayer, which needs to be reset this morning. Okay, let us pray. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, who shows us your mercy and upon us, and grant us your salvation. We pray for all the people in their daily life and work for our families and friends and neighbors and for those who are alone. We pray for this day and for going into it. Bless the labor of our hands and minds so that they may add to your glory. May our every step and action be a witness to our love for you and for our neighbor. And on this day of Thanksgiving, Lord, we, we give you thanks for all that you have provided. We pray for this community, the nation, and the world, 
for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for reconciliation and for hate and violence to be vanished from this land. We pray for reliance on Rodney's Chapel Charge for the Virginia Annual Conference for our Bishop Sharma Lewis, for the Global United Methodist Church, and for all your churches that witness to your glory. We pray that all who profess and confess themselves to be Christians may be led into the ways of truth and hold faith in unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. We pray for our world at a time of challenge in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. For all those who lead their people through this crisis, for the doctors and nurses overwhelmed by the numbers, for those quarantined, for those who are suffering with the virus, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for our world this time of challenge in the face of social unrest brought on by divisiveness, systemic racial injustices, and hatred for the other. We pray for all of those who are peacemakers and for those who seek to end injustices. We pray for children, youth, and young adults growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. May they find your path, Lord. Lead them away from the false promises of the world. We pray for your mercy, those of our families and communities whose increasing years have brought them weakness, distress, or isolation. Help us to be their helpers and caretakers. Increase their faith and assurance of your love. We also pray for forgiveness of our sins. Let's pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let us, as people of God, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're turning into Advent now, and I hope that you will continue to join us through this Advent time. I got to remember which side of the camera I'm looking at. So I'm, I'm glad that you've joined us this morning, and, and we're, we're coming into this time of Advent, and we're thinking about living hope. And uh, we'll start readings on Sunday, which is the first day of Advent. And uh, if you'd like to have a copy of those readings, I'd be happy to provide it to you. Just send me a message through Facebook Messenger, or you can take and um, send me a um, email. Let me quickly here put up here my email address so that you can 
do this here. Here we go. Go. You can see that right there, and uh, just send me a message, and I'll be I'll be happy to to send to you the um, what you need to be part of this Advent reading, and uh, I will be having Facebook Live events to to talk about it during during this Advent season. Advent is a time of being in between when. Christ has died and risen, and that time when we wait for the return, we wait for the kingdom that he inaugurated become finally consummated with his return, and, and all of it will be collected to what is God's. I'm going to give thanks for that, too, among the many things. So I'm glad that you are with us that you have had this opportunity to come into this space and set off your day of as we get ready for and we get for Thanksgiving. I hope that uh, it'll be a joyful one for you. Almighty God, you have given us grace in this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us as in this world the knowledge of your truth. In the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation of the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. My friends, have a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, feast. I pray that you are safe and, and, and sound this morning and, and wherever you're celebrating this time of Thanksgiving. I hope that uh, you continue to keep each other safe by wearing, our, wearing the masks and washing the hands repeatedly and also keeping a safe distance from others and, and, and spread out people please you know if you're at a family gathering even then try to get, uh, have some space between you because you know some of the ways that this has been spreading is through families like this it seems to be growing it seems to be around us all the time so I pray that you know that things will go well for you today Miss Regina and I are going to be home we're going to reach out by zoom through to the family and uh, down in Mechanicsville and down in South Carolina and over in Arkansas where my brother is and we'll be just touching everybody that that we love and care about so I hope that you continue to enjoy this day and blessings upon you and I'll be here tomorrow morning again as we go into Black Friday um, I hope that uh, again we do what's wise and keeps keeps everyone safe because that will that will bless the Lord and produce fruit. God. Well, God bless you, and we will see you tomorrow.